And we're back. Day number seven on the advent calendar. So let's get straight on in. Behind every door is a Magic the Gathering booster pack. And today, lucky number seven is Zendikar Rising. So we're back to the set boosters after the last couple days of Ikoria and Pharos. So, all right. Man. Uh, I'm trying to think. The Zendikar Rising boosters for set boosters, it has been forever since I've actually, you know, bought Zendikar. has been forever since anyone really went and bought any of this set. It's really has had the unfortunate fact of, you know, being during lockdown. Um, so it was, again, not being bought, not being drafted. But I just remember that outside of one or two cards, there wasn't really anything that was having people shouting hope. So let's have a look. And I broke the rule about not opening from the back because that spoils whether or not we have a list card. But whoops. Well, our card is Ashaya. And of course, it would not be Zendikar without full art lands. So here we have a mountain. I don't know if I was ex excited about the full arts for this Zendikar. There was just something that didn't feel as kind of grand or spectacular. Like, they're all trying to show the ruins of the land that have been re-emerging. I don't know, there was... Maybe it's the fact we've had full art lands just become really a lot more open about where they appear. But, eh, let's see. Scale the heights. Two and a green for a sorcery. Put a plus one counter on up to one target creature. You gain two life. You may play an additional land this turn and draw a card. Landfall, of course. <clears throat> a staple of Zendikar. Uh... I don't know, I think this card, I've played it a couple of times in Brawl and other places, just for the fun of it. Yeah, played it with Kadama and so on to get the plus one counter and do things. Mind Drain. Two and a black for a sorcery, target opponent discards two cards, mills a card, and loses one life, you gain one life. It's one of those kind of mind draw variations. The mill, I feel is kind of random, but the drain is welcome. So, you know. Eey. Glacial Grasp. Two and a blue. For instant, tap target creature. Its controller mills two cards. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next end step, and draw a card. So far, we've revealed spells that are two and whichever color. Is there another free mana spell behind this in white or red? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We have Anticognition. One in a blue instant. Counter target creature or planeswalker, unless its controller pays two. If an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, instead counter the spell, then scry two. This was back during the whole blue black rogues and standard, just where you had mill as a win condition along with just make your rogues really annoying. I don't know if this was part... I don't believe this was part of that deck. But it was nice to see the supporting going from there. Skyclave Sentinel. Kicker. Yes, Kicker was in this set. Just recently had its comeback there in Dominaria United. So, free mana for a 2 free artifact creature, Gargoyle. Flying and Defender with Kicker 4. If it was kicked, enters with 2 plus 1 counters. And as long as it has a plus one counter, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So, interestingly enough, uh, doesn't need to be kicked for that to happen. As long as you have any way to put a plus one counter on it, it can attack. So, yeah, I remember this was a body that you could just, you know, it wasn't a first pick, but it was a reliable thing. Skyclave Shadow Cat. Free black for a cat horror who's a free free, and has one in a black, sacrifice another creature, put a plus one counter on the Shadow Cat. 
Whenever a creature you control with a plus one counter on it dies, draw a card. I'm trying to think back again. It feels like so long ago, back in the before times. But I don't think this was a... I don't think this was a massively big powerhouse for Limited or anything. But it's just kind of creepy and kind of wonderful there, you know? Let's see. Ah, and of course, Zendikar Rising was where we started seeing these, the modal lands, the double-faced. Kazul's Fury, two and a red on one side, instant, adds additional cost to cast it, sack a creature. It deals damage equal to that power to the creature to any target. And on the back, not looking at what's next, Kazul's Cliffs. Enters the battlefield tapped, add a red. So yeah, Zendikar was the first set that really went and played around with double-faced cards a lot more than they had in the past. I think I actually prefer the, the Zendikar treatment of it and how it worked uh, compared to Strixhaven and other card sets that came afterwards that played with the space. There is something nice about just having a land on the back so that, you know, it's not always a dead card in your hand. It gave you a little bit of leeway. But, over here, we have Deliberate. One in a blue for an instant. Scry two, then draw a card. Yeah, does the job. Expedition Champion. Two in a red for a 2-3. Gets plus two as long as you control another warrior. I remember White Red in this set was about warriors. There was a bit of an equipment theme. Uh, can't say any further. Ooh. So, as our rare, we have another double faced card Needle Verge Pathway. One of the double faces again on one side, taps for red. On the other, taps for white. Yeah, pretty cool. And our foil. Fisher Wizard. When it enters, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. One in a red for a Goblin Wizard. Yeah. Just a classic rummaging Goblin with a Wizard because party was a thing where you wanted to get the creature types all lined up. Yeah. I'd say that this wasn't half bad. And pathways are always welcome. Uh... It's still got a ways to beat that pack of Ikoria that we opened the other day. But for now, we'll have to wait until tomorrow. See you guys later.